Good afternoon, everybody, and thank you for joining today's update. As of today, we have had 903,374 COVID-19 cases, 2,112 new cases reported since yesterday, 945 people in the hospital, and 11,987 people who've died. Our prayers continually are with those who've lost loved ones or who are fighting this virus. Our sustained progress with the COVID-19 metrics allowed us this week to ease some additional restrictions beginning tomorrow while maintaining strong safety protocols. We're focused on slowing the spread of this virus while continuing to move the economy forward in a safe way. And our healthcare providers across the state are working tirelessly, early and late, in our fast and fair distribution of vaccines. As of today, we've administered almost 4.3 million doses, and almost a third of our adult population has gotten at least one shot, and one in five of our adult population are fully vaccinated. And we're seeing continued improvement in providing vaccines to underserved communities. Our Department of Health and Human Services is working with providers to improve outreach and ensure more people have access. That includes standing up community vaccine sites, working with houses of worship, civic groups, and businesses, setting up a free vaccine hotline, and much more. These efforts are important in getting more shots in arms. Vaccines are the key to moving us forward, and I, I'm ready for that. I'm sure you are too. As I mentioned on Tuesday, our vaccine team has been talking with providers constantly to assess where they are in getting vaccine out across the state. It varies in different localities, but our overall success has been good and the state's ready to open vaccine access to more adults. So today I'm announcing that we will move to the rest of group four on March 31st. This includes essential workers and commercial services such as hospitality and retail, chemical and pharmaceutical facilities, construction, housing, and real estate, and other essential sectors. Then the biggest change will happen on April 7th when we will open eligibility to group five. And that means all adults will then be eligible for the vaccine. We've been faster and have gotten more supply than we had anticipated, and that's fantastic. Our Department of Health and Human Services and our vaccine team here, along with providers across the state, deserve a lot of thanks. I'm also grateful for North Carolinians who are taking this seriously and getting the shot when it's their time. And I'm encouraged that North Carolina will be able to open eligibility to all adults well ahead of the president's May 1st goal. We're not there yet, but in the next couple of months, we'll have enough supply for everyone who wants a vaccine to get one. And when that happens, each of us is going to have to talk with our friends and family who are hesitating about getting vaccinated and convince them to do it because the vaccine is our path to recovery. It is the road to normalcy. As of now, this pandemic is not over yet. We need to keep up our guard, wear our masks, and act responsibly. That will save lives and continue to spark the economy. We're close to getting where we want to be, so let's stay the course and get there faster. Also with me today is Stacy Carlos, our Executive Director of the North Carolina Counts Coalition, our Secretary of Public Safety, Eric Hooks, and our Emergency Management Chief of Staff, Will Ray. Lee Williamson is our Sign Language Interpreter, and Jackie and Jasmine Mativier are our Spanish Language Interpreters. We also have with us our Secretary of our Department of Health and Human Services, Dr. Mandy Cohen, and we will call on her today to say a few words. Dr. Cohen. Well, thank you, Governor. As Governor Cooper shared, thanks to the hard work of our vaccinating providers and improving vaccine supplies, we're accelerating the timeline for moving to group four and five. 
The rest of Group 4, which includes those essential wor additional essential workers and people living in other congregate settings such as student dorms, will be eligible for vaccinations next week beginning March the 31st. This group includes a range of essential workers, as the governor mentioned, identified by the federal government, such as people working in retail businesses, energy plants, banking, financial services, construction, hotels, sanitation, public infrastructure, and others. You can find a complete list on our website, yourshotyourspot.nc.gov. Then, beginning on April 7th, all North Carolinians ages 16 and over will be eligible for vaccine. The accelerated timeline will allow us to double down on our fast and fair approach to getting people vaccinated. North Carolina has been recognized nationally for its work to get COVID-19 vaccines to historically marginalized populations. The CDC recently ranked the state in the top 10 for getting vaccines to vulnerable communities. We've embedded equity into all aspects of our vaccine operations, from how we determine who gets vaccine and how they may receive to get outreach and educational efforts, to our work with the federally supported site in Greensboro, which demonstrates that our intentional focus produces results. We partnered with grassroots and community organizations on the ground in Greensboro to, le to lead on outreach and facilitate appointments. We set aside half of those appointments in Greensboro for those trusted partners to schedule. And as of yesterday, 22% of all vaccinations at the Greensboro Community Vaccination Center have gone to Black or African American population and 14% have gone to the Hispanic Latinx population. Today, we are announcing a new public-private partnership to expand this work and the best practices across the state. It's a program called Healthier Together, which will be led by the NC Counts Coalition to help increase the number of individuals from historically marginalized populations to make sure that they can receive the COVID-19 vaccine. Healthier Together will increase access to vaccines to historically marginalized populations by conducting outreach and education efforts, coordinated local vac coordinating local vaccine events at trusted and accessible locations, helping people schedule and get to vaccine appointments, providing on-site tra translation services, and helping to ensure people get to those second dose appointments. As part of this initiative, Healthier Together will provide grants to community-based organizations to do this work and hire regional health equity teams to support community-based organizations in their outreach and education efforts and to help match them to our vaccination providers. These regional teams also will work with our department, the Department of Health and Human Services, to ensure that the communities have the vaccine supply, outreach, and transportation resources they need to get people vaccinated. The program is funded by the federal COVID-19 dollars. I'm very excited to have with us Stacy Carlis, who is the executive director of the NC Counts Coalition and a recognized leader across the state. I'm gonna turn it to Stacy to share a few remarks. Thank you, Governor Cooper and Secretary Cohen. Good afternoon. My name is Stacy Carlos, and I am the Executive Director of NC Counts Coalition. NC Counts Coalition is a nonpartisan, nonprofit, 501c3 organization committed to building a healthy, just, and equitable North Carolina through cross sector partnerships that advance systemic solutions for communities facing systemic barriers, including Black, Indigenous, people of color, LGBTQ, low wealth, and immigrants. We envision a North Carolina where everyone counts and has a fair opportunity to reach their full potential. Today, is, it is with great pleasure that I stand here with Governor Cooper and Secretary Cohen to announce North NC Counts Coalition's partnership with the state to co-develop and implement the Healthier Together initiative. Through Healthier Together, we will begin working with the state to address and dismantle systemic and structural barriers to health equity. Following NC Counts partnership, with Secretary Sanders and the NC Complete Count Commission to support a complete and accurate 2020 census count, we began exploring ways to continue our partnership with the state to build an equitable North Carolina. Our 2020 census partnership with Secretary Sanders showed us how much we could accomplish together. I am excited that Healthier Together allows us to continue our partnership with the state and build onto our decennial census infrastructure. 
Through this partnership, we will continue to invest in our community's health and well-being through the expertise of state, regional, and community partners led by and serving BIPOC communities who know the needs of their communities best. Over the next couple of months, NC Counts Coalition will be building its team and expanding our grant program to support our work with the state and community-based organizations to increase the number of historically marginalized populations receiving vaccinations. Our work will support the state's ongoing priority to maximize the speed and efficiency of North Carolina's COVID-19 vaccine distribution while adhering to its commitment to equity. For the past year, COVID-19 has exposed and exasperated racial and ethnic health disparities stemming from a history of exploitation, disinvestment, disenfranchisement, and marginalization of BIPOC communities. Health inequities have plagued BIPOC communities for centuries, and we cannot afford to wait another moment to address these inequities as precious lives continue to be on the line. This is it. This is the time. Today, NC Counts Coalition joins the Department of Health and Human Services in its commitment to Healthier Together. Together, we will build the healthy, just, and equitable North Carolina where everyone counts and everyone has the opportunity to reach their full potential. Thank you, Stacy. That was wonderful. Healthier Together is another embodiment of our commitment to equity. It brings together the expertise and relationships of trusted community-based organizations with the policy tools and resources of the state government to create a new partnership model to address vaccine and other health equities. We continue to make great progress on getting people vaccinated. Our work, though, is not yet done. So keep wearing a mask, waiting six feet apart, and washing your hands often while everyone gets a spot to get their shot. Thank you, Governor. Thank you, Secretary Cohen, and thank you, Stacy. Thank you for the work that you did uh, with the census, and we look forward to healthier together. We'll take some questions from the media. If you can identify yourself and your organization, we'll take the first question. Our first question is from Tina Terry with WSOC. Thank you, this is Tina Terry with WSOC TV in Charlotte. Thank you for taking my question. Um, some have expressed the desire to receive the vaccine at their doctor's offices and to be able to talk one on one with a health professional that they trust about the vaccine. Is it a priority of yours to get more vaccine into doctor's offices in the state? And when do you foresee that happening on a greater scale? Thank you. We're continuing to expand the number of providers that we have, including doctor's offices. Uh, one of the things that has prevented more of that is the fact that uh, these vaccines, particularly the Pfizer and the Moderna to a lesser extent, uh, have cold storage requirements. They come in large packages. So it is more difficult to get them to doctor's offices so that they can uh, administer the vaccines there. With more and more of the Johnson & Johnson one-shot vaccine that doesn't have such extreme uh, storage requirements, we hope to have more people being vaccinated in their doctor's offices. And I'm certain that it's going to be more and more a part of the plan as we get to that point that I mentioned earlier where our supply exceeds the demand and we're going to be having to convince people to get this vaccine and part of that army of people that's going to do the convincing will be individual doctors and health care providers whom people trust. So that's something that we hope. But Dr. Cohen can probably shed a little more light on that. Dr. Cohen. Well, Governor, you did a terrific job covering that. And what I would say is that there are many uh, doctor's offices that are already participants in the program. And while they may not get a direct allocation, what we're seeing is a lot of partnerships um, amongst whether it's health departments or hospitals. And what they do is they receive the allocation from the state and then they actually are able to break down those larger uh, quantities of vaccine that the governor mentioned and then um, allow some of our smaller practices to be able to administer those vaccines. So that's happening more and more. Um, and we are onboarding more providers each and every week. Thank you. Thank you. 
Next question, please. We have a follow-up, Tina Terry, WSOC. Thank you. Um, this week, uh, the state of Georgia announced that it will allow people as young as 16 to obtain a vaccine appointment. Will North Carolina consider lowering the qualifying um, age for people in Group 5? My understanding is that at this point, they'll have to be 18 or, or older. Thank you. It will be uh, 16 and over uh, beginning on April the 7th. Uh, there are certain, certain vaccines, though, that people under 18 cannot get, and I'm going to let Dr. Cohen talk about that a little bit. Hi, Tina. It's important for folks to understand that there's only one of the three vaccines that is currently um, authorized for emergency use in those that are 16 or 17. It's only the Pfizer vaccine that is authorized for 16 and 17 year olds. That means the Moderna and the Johnson & Johnson are only for those who are 18 and up. Pfizer is for 16 and up. As we go into group five, we know that we are going to be opening it up to that group and we're going to need to make it easier for those who are 16 and 17 to identify which providers have the Pfizer vaccine. So stay tuned to some updates to our vaccine finder tool to make that easier um, over the next couple of weeks. Thank you. Next question, please. Our next question is from Michael Hyland with CBS 17. Hi, this is Michael Hyland from CBS 17. Uh, now that you all are moving forward with this, do you at this point have a target percentage of the population that you think needs to get fully vaccinated for you to feel safe lifting the mask mandate and any other restrictions? How far off do you think that is from happening? We've been discussing that, and obviously we have just been working uh, tirelessly to make sure as many people as we possibly can get vaccinated. And we're looking forward to the summertime where we have a much larger percentage of people who are vaccinated. We can have significantly fewer restrictions and return to normalcy. But what's gonna be required is as many people as possible getting the vaccine. And there is some concern that we might have a large percentage of the population that uh, is hesitant about it and may refuse. And that's why I mentioned earlier that we're gonna depend on doctors and ministers and family members and friends uh, to push and cajole those who may be hesitant about getting the vaccine. I'll let Dr. Cohen talk about what numbers we wanna hit. I don't think we are, are there yet. We want to work with the CDC and see what they say about it. But Dr. Cohen, I'll recognize you. Hi, Michael. So I want to point out the success that we have had so far. I know we, uh, the governor mentioned earlier that a third of adults overall in North Carolina have already uh, gotten at least one vaccine. And if you look at those who are over 65, remember those are the folks we started vaccinating first, over 70% have gotten at least one dose of a vaccine and more than 55% are fully vaccinated. So we are really making quite good progress. Um, I think as we move through these additional phases, um, we're going to be, as the governor said, working with our CDC partners to understand setting some goals um, for us to make sure that we are getting as many folks as we can. I'm very proud of the work we've done to be both fast as well as fair and equitable with the vaccines is why we've been getting national attention. And I think that is going to help us as we um, look to the next number of months with supply increasing. If we can keep up those tactics, if we can use part partners like Stacy and the, the um, Healthier Together program, that, I think that is a way that we can reach communities because we see that when we bring vaccine to folks and we really simplify the process, they know where to access it, that folks are getting vaccinated. Um, so we're, we're looking forward to continuing that work, but we know we have our work cut out for us to make sure that we can vaccinate as many people here in North Carolina as possible. Next question. Follow-up, Michael Hyland, CBS 17. Uh, based on what you're hearing about the anticipated supply in the coming weeks, how much longer do you think it's going to be when the supply is great enough that people are going to be able to just go online, instantly book appointments without having to wait days or weeks or searching across multiple websites trying to find an appointment? 
We're, con we're continuing to see increased supply, and the last White House call, they told us that we hope to be getting more, but I'll let Dr. Cohen address that specifically. Hi, Michael. Thanks for that. And, and as the governor said, we are still trying to get a better forecast from our federal partners. We know we're going to get more supply, but even as we look into this next week um, and we're going to get another um, uh, delivery of Johnson and Johnson vaccines. But even then, we thought we would be getting more. We're not getting quite as much as we thought we were going to get. And so it is really hard for us to know exactly where supply is going to be over a period of time. With today's announcement and accelerating uh, moving to all adults on April 7th, I think as we move through that the, the April time frame, understand what our vaccine supply is going to be. I think that we'll have better um, opportunity to be able to share where we think supply and demand will be as we move through that month. Thanks. Next question. Our next question is from Don Vaughn with the News and Observer. Good afternoon, Don Vaughn with the NNO. Uh, you said earlier you've been discussing the vaccination numbers or benchmarks. Can you give us more transparency on the future restrictions lifting process going forward? Um, and if, if there is a number or percentage and everyone that wants a vaccine is able to get one and it's, you know, they're two weeks post vaccination, um, why they would still need to be under restriction. So a lot of that information is going to have to come from health professionals and the research that is done regarding people who have been fully vaccinated and what they can and cannot do. I'll let Dr. Cohen address uh, what she has discovered so far. And we know that the idea is to get as many people as we can, as we can vaccinated. And we know that what we want to do is to get to as normal a situation as we possibly can. But Dr. Cohen. Hi, Don. As we think about easing restrictions, um, as, as we are going to do tomorrow, we always look at that combination of metrics. It's not just cases, but it's also our surveillance metrics. It's how many people are in the hospital, the percent of tests coming back positive. And the good news is our trends have been going in the right direction, but they are leveling. Um, and as that's what we had showed. So we do need to really keep an eye on that. In addition, we are certainly looking at how many of our adults um, are vaccinated. I'd caution everyone to remember, even as good as these vaccines are, no vaccine is perfect. And that's why we want to get as many folks vaccinated to really get that viral level low in our communities. And right now, we also know not everyone can access a vaccine right now. So give us the time to protect each other while we get everyone a spot to get their shot over the next number of weeks and months. Thanks. Next question, please. We have a follow-up, Don Vaughn, News and Observer. Hi, thanks for the follow-up. Um, are these um, discussions or meetings between um, you, Governor Cooper, and, and Dr. Cohen and others? Um, and can you tell us more about that process outside of um, what's announced with the, the weekly press conferences? Discussions. Uh, we talk with healthcare professionals. Uh, we also, when we're talking about easing capacity limits, we talk to the businesses that are being affected and hear from them. Uh, we've been talking with state legislators and getting their input, uh, but we mostly are looking at the data and making decisions upon advice of health professionals. Uh, we've done that from the beginning, and we'll continue to do that as we make decisions down the road. I'm very much looking forward to uh, getting a large percentage of our population vaccinated and returning to a more normal time, and we hope that's sooner rather than later. That's why we're encouraging the federal government to get us as much supply as we possibly can. And that's why we will be encouraging people who are hesitant about this vaccine to get vaccinated so we can get to normal and um, moving forward at as fast a speed as we can, particularly when it comes to our economy. Next question, please. Our next question is from Rose Hoban with NC Health News. Hi, folks. Thank you for taking our question. Um, 
know, you know, we've we've heard from a couple of readers that there are starting to be places where local officials are having difficulty filling vaccine appointments. Um, are you starting to worry about there being more vaccines than demand? So we certainly want to get to that point, but we want it to be at a time when more people are vaccinated. It's one of the reasons why we are moving to the rest of group four and why we're going to go ahead and move to group five on April the 7th, uh, because we are hearing some from some providers that uh, they can use more people coming in for appointments. I think it's really important, though, that we have to continue to work hard to get out into communities, convincing people who are hesitant, uh, trying to help people who are homebound, uh, people who may not have access to the Internet or may not think that this is so important. We're really going to have to keep working hard through this entire process to make sure people are being vaccinated, and particularly when we do reach that point when supply exceeds demand. And uh, I, this opening up the process more, I think, will help us with that. You got any comments on it, Dr. Cohen? Okay. Next question, please. Our final question today is from Brian Anderson with the Associated Press. Hi, Governor. Hi, Dr. Cohen. Two questions for you, just really quick for the governor. Uh, will you veto any budget passed by the General Assembly if it does not include Medicaid expansion? Then I have a, a follow-up after. So getting more health care coverage to people in North Carolina is certainly a priority. Uh, Medicaid expansion is the best way to do that. Everything is on the table this budget session. I've agreed with the legislative leaders that we want to put everything on the table, and we hope that uh, each side gets what it wants, that we can work together to reach a budget that I can sign. I want to do that. I do know that uh, if the budget is not right for North Carolina, I won't sign it and may veto it. But I, it's not going to be dependent on any one particular issue. Next question. Uh, hi, Governor. Can you still hear me there? <laughs> yeah, 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 I can now. Yeah. Appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, I, I'm just curious, a couple other reporters have alluded to it. When can the public expect to have a concrete goal of the percentage needed to be vaccinated before mandates can be lifted. I, I know you sort of said that there's still those ongoing conversations, but when can the public expect to have a concrete goal? Oh, and I'm gonna let you take that one. Hi, Brian. Well, we have the goal right now of getting as many North Carolinians vaccinated as possible. It's why we're accelerating the timelines. I think our vaccine providers have done an incredible job being fast and fair. It's why we're getting national recognition for the work that folks have done. Um, and, and remember, it has to be a combination of things that we look at. Certainly, we want to see more and more folks be vaccinated. We still look at those key four metrics that we've looked at since the beginning of this pandemic and the amount of viral spread. And we have to remember the wild card in all of this is that the virus changes. We have variants already. It is likely that this virus will change more. Those are the kinds of things that we need to take into consideration as we think about what the future holds. But what I could say is getting a vaccine is our way out of this pandemic. Um, and so we want to make sure everyone is getting vaccinated as quickly as possible. That's why we're focused on this work. I'm happy to have Stacy here that we can partner together to really reach um, all of the communities of North Carolina. And that's where we're going to focus on right now. Thanks, Brian. Thanks, everyone, for being with us today. Stay safe out there.